Newsday here on Arise News. The link between the financial sector and economic growth has been debated in financial and economic literatures many a times, and many researchers are still of the view that there still exists a great detoxomy regarding the role of financial intermediaries in, fa in facilitating sustainable economic growth in the long term. While the CEO and MD of Ecobank Nigeria, PLC, that's Patrick Akimuton, joins us now to take a look at the uh, financial sector here in Nigeria, as well as the role of banking and finance in facilitating facilitating a sustainable future. Very good to have you um, on Newsday with us today, sir, to look at financing or the finance sector, the banking sector, and all of that in more detail. And the first question that I have for you today is on how the banking sector has transformed with the fourth industrial revolution. I think COVID-19 in particular has shown us so much, such as the need for digital banking. Over to you. Thank you very much. Well, Ahead of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the banking industry in Nigeria has actually been very forward-looking, uh, putting in place the pillars to enable digital banking and financial inclusion as a means to uh, promoting sustainable economic development. Uh, as you would um, know, in Nigeria, uh, we have the instant payments, uh, which followed uh, the revolution of use of cards and ATMs and POSs. And today, every Nigerian is able to do financial transactions seamlessly on the mobile phone, be it on a mobile app or using uh, the USSD string. Uh, the whole idea is bringing financial services to every household so that we can all participate effectively in the growth of the largest economy in Africa. All right. Uh, Patrick, just a while ago there, you heard Leila read uh, that researchers are saying there exists a dichotomy uh, regarding the part, the sector, the financial and, of course, uh, sector is, is expected to play in facilitating sustainable economic growth. What's your sense as one of the big players in this field? Well, thank you. Uh, this is actually the major reason for the Banking and Finance Conference, uh, which is uh, coming up on the 15th and 16th of September this year, where we'll be talking about facilitating a sustainable future, uh, the role of banking and finance. It is a forum that provides the platform for all the players, be it the policy makers, uh, the analysts, the participants, businessmen and women, uh, millennials, uh, fintechs, and of course the banks and financial institutions uh, to come together to deliberate on how best to leverage on the major platforms, policy trusts that exist in our country with a view to leveraging digital uh, to take the country into the rightful place in the community of nations. All right, um, let me bring you, um, or let me speak from a consumer's perspective. Yeah. Um, at the moment, um, there are talks that COVID-19 has actually driven bank account openings. They say right now 111 million accounts actually domiciled across several banks. But at the same time, a lot of customers have complained that post-COVID, we are seeing services actually slow down and diminish. It's slower to get things done with banks right now than it was pre-COVID. Well, I can say firmly, and you can test, that um, from the forward-looking position of the central bank, uh, if we did establish Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 bank accounts, the Tier 1 account is actually a basic account which operates fundamentally like a wallet that enables every Nigerian uh, using your bank. I won't shy from it. For instance, you want to open an account with Echo Bank, you dial star 326 hash uh, straight on your mobile phone, and you'll be taken through to open your account seamlessly. And as you climb up the value chain, you then uh, enhance the type of account you have to get to tier two and tier three account, which requires a BVN, which in itself is another revolution uh, put in place by uh, our regulators, the central bank, working together with NIBS, which is a large-scale uh, 
uh, services platform for financial transactions processing in Nigeria. The fact of the matter is there's need for increased advocacy uh, because today there is neighborhood banking being implemented across Nigeria through what you call agency banking. We as banks have a common platform, SANEF, uh, that is planting uh, within every neighborhood a bank branch, typically called an agency location. Uh, we, of course, also have that in Ecobank called Express uh, Point. Uh, 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 no, but, uh, but, but uh, let me just take uh, him up uh, on the question. Uh, yes. Because as a Nigerian, right. I, I don't still feel comfortable going to neighborhood centers to do my transactions. I still feel safe going to the physical banking hall to do that. And these days, we still see long queues. People try to do online banking. Services, most of the time, are slow. And that's what I'm trying to address. The actuality that today is more difficult to bank post-COVID as it is pre-COVID. And we will Actually, love it. Just, to, uh, just to add, just yes. to add, not, not, not stopping your answer, just to add, yes. we'll love it if, if you just try not to mention any of the banks. I mean, you can okay. discuss the financial sector. I wanted to be practical, because, uh, but I no, get no, that. Yeah, <laughs> just try not to mention any of the banks. Okay. But the, the fact of the matter is that uh, pre-COVID, the, the thinking amongst the larger populace is that you must go to a physical bank location or go to an ATM for you to be able to withdraw money or to do transfers or indeed to save because the average upbringing that we have in Nigeria is that it's important to save before you start to spend. So when it comes to mobilizing savings, the ability to save 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira, uh, it is critical that you're able to do that without incurring costs of transporting to a physical bank location. That is available today through the various agency locations in Nigeria. And leveraging technology, those locations are able to ensure that you receive an alert to evidence that your savings has been done, not the historical passbook, that we were used to where we write on a, on a cardboard or a hard uh, cover paper, and then we would tick or have it signed. Today, you deposit your 2,000 naira at an agent location next door, the person who is selling beverages, the person selling bread, the person, your closest supermarket, where your barbing shop, your, ta your tailor's shop, all these are becoming agent locations. And it is indeed revolutionary. It is a product of the forward thinking of both the regulators and the participants that have embraced this, and the collaboration between uh, the technology that is available, the penetration from telecoms, and the presence of 200 million people willing to do financial services. Thank that you. is actually happening today in Nigeria. Thank you. So speaking of technology, speaking of all of these advancements, there's one more thing I would like to discuss with you, and that's intra-Africa trade, because banks play a huge role in that. And the demand for dollar has been a major issue when it comes to African remittances. And many people feel that cryptocurrencies can help with this. Um, of course, as we know, it would free up and then there'll be less demand for the dollar. Um, do you see the CBN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, or should the CBN allow banks to remit in crypto or other stable coins, for that matter, so that we can boost intra-Africa trade? That sounds to me like something that's also progressive. Well, this is essentially why the Bankers Committee, the CIBN, in collaboration with the Central Bank, has put together this Banking and Finance Conference. The date is 15th of September, 15th and 16th. It's a hybrid conference. It's the first conference in which everyone is able to participate free, dialing in on uh, the Zoom platform that will be provided. The link is available in order that we all deliberate on but this Mr. major Kimotan, opportunity. Can yes, I get your trade. opinion on that? Yes, can I get yeah. your opinion on what you think with regards to that? Just very briefly, sir, we only have a couple seconds. Okay. I think with the Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement that is in place and about to kick off, Nigeria is indeed positioned to leverage every available technology to make sure that we actually operate a one market across Africa seamlessly backed by the financial integration that technology provides. Be it uh, uh, 
using the traditional cards, the traditional uh, payment systems. Then you come to the new opportunities uh, that, uh, that cryptocurrency, uh, that uh, uh, QR codes provide, right. uh, but with appropriate regulation right. to uh, ensure safety and we'll, transparency of transactions. We'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much for Thank being you. a part of the new state. Thank you very much. See you at the <laughs>